From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Jack Van Impey presents. Today, to say the least, we have a show, a program that I know you're going to be astounded to hear because I learned so very, very much from Jack while we were preparing the program for you. First of all, was Karl Marx, the founder of communism, a professing Christian? Going on. A former Christ Community Church removes the cross of Christ. And is the United States now on a slippery slope to socialist tyranny? Oh my, oh my. We're going to be dealing with all of that and very, very much more. I think you'll agree with this statement. Some of the most respected men in American history are the men who held the office of president. And we are going to take a look at some of those men who held the office of president. First of all, in God we trust. That is exactly what the ones on the screen wanted to say when they were in office. This is, of course, our first president, George Washington. And he said, in God we trust. Going on, then there was John Adams. In God we trust. Once again, Thomas Jefferson, in God we trust. And once again, this was not a president, of course, but Benjamin Franklin, that famous statesman, in God we trust. And here you see a picture of some of the presidents. Forty-three men held the office of president. You'll probably recognize the picture of some of them there. Wonderful men. And many of them said, in God we trust. I quoted to you several times that statement. Four words, very important. And I would ask Jack, to which God were they addressing their faith? In God we trust, Jack, to which God? Well, most of our presidents have been great Christians and stood for the Holy Bible and the Word of God, especially George Washington and Abraham Lincoln many others in our day. But Rexella, right now, God, Christ, and the Bible is being attacked like never before. And a lot of it has to do with atheism and socialism. Atheism, they are even beginning to run ads now. Those are only 1% of the population of America that they put on buses mocking the fact that there is a God. And I'm gonna say this right now. Psalm 14, one and Chapter 53, verse 1, both state, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Look, some morning, stretch your face to the heavens and quote Psalm 19, 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. He created it in the beginning. God created heaven and earth. You know why I know there is a God? Because we are one galaxy. And now they tell us that there are at least a billion, maybe up to a trillion galaxies out there, each with 200 to 400 million suns, and it all just came into existence. Bing, bang! That's like saying, see this wristwatch I'm wearing? All this junk was lying on the floor. Boop! There was a watch. Nonsense. Now, who is the God that all of these great leaders of America accepted? Well, in Exodus 20, verse 3, the first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that's the Trinitarian God. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Father's name is Yahweh. The Son is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is the Comforter. And that's paraclete, translated into a comforting. 
A trinity? Yes. God says in Matthew 28 and 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The one name is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13, 14, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And guess what? These three are one. A little seven-year-old old boy was asked to explain the Trinity. He said, I don't know a lot about the Bible, but let me tell you this. Three and one, and one and three, and the one in the middle died for me. He was smarter than some of these ministers and theologians today. But if you don't believe they're one, 1 John 5, 7, there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. I believe God. Yea, let God be true, and every man an atheist and socialist a liar. Romans 3, 4. You know, Jack, I like that little boy. He had it right. You know, he had it right. Simplistic faith in the Lord. Well, let's ask Jack something we're going to be talking about an awful lot here today. The difference between democracy and socialism. What is the difference between democracy and socialism? How about it, Jack? Democracy is a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. They are in control. Socialism is a government-controlled citizenship. They have nothing to say. And as I was studying all of the different names today, Hitler and Nazism was really socialism that could lead to Marxism. And maybe even communism, though Hitler was opposed to that. But definitely socialism. And his party was the National Socialist German Workers' Party. And boy, did he control them. Heil Hitler! And if you didn't pay attention, to be dead. Not only did he murder 6 million Jews, but he murdered 11 million Gentiles. And through him, 50 million died in World War II. Socialism. Obey me or else. Then we had Stalin. Do you know what? He was studying in a Russian seminary to become a Russian Orthodox priest, and he got involved in socialism, rose to the top, start governing the people. If you don't obey me, you'll be killed. And another 50 million were killed by that savage. And then we had Mao Titsong, Chairman Mao. And of course, you know, his was communism. North Korea, communism. Many of the Oriental nations are communistic. And he murdered 100 million of his Chinese people. And right now, Hillary Clinton tells us that Ahmadinejad of Iran is a dictator who is going to take over the military and the country. And who's his big buddy now from Venezuela, Chavez? And he says, I am dropping the mask of democracy and he's already taken over the media of his nation. This is a dangerous, horrible thing and it's coming to America probably through present administration, as you're going to see today, shocking quotes. Under socialism, yeah, under socialism. Yeah. Well, in my wildest dreams, I never imagined that Karl Marx, the famous atheist, remember, and the one who embraced socialism, Marxism, communism, was uh, at one time in his life a professing Christian. Can you believe that one? But take a look at this. Here is the cover of a book. Was Karl Marx a Satanist? Now, this is a very, very interesting article by the same person here. Jack, would you like to read that about Karl Marx, please? Oh, this is touching. In his very early youth, Karl Marx was a Christian. His first written work is called The Union of the Faithful with Christ. There we read these beautiful words. Through love of Christ, we turn our hearts at the same time toward our brethren who are inwardly bound to us and for whom Christ gave himself in sacrifice. Then, as he went to college, he embraced socialism and something mysterious happened in his life. He became profoundly, passionately anti-religious. A new Marx began to emerge. He writes in a poem, I wish to avenge myself against the one who rules above. I hate all gods. I worship Satan. Then, when the time came for his death, in his poem, The Pale Maiden, he wrote, Thus heaven I forfeited. I know it full well. My soul, once true to God, is chosen for hell. That's true of most socialists. 
Oh, isn't that sad? Do you read that with Jack? Isn't it sad? You've got a man who said, I love God, I love people. He turned against God, he hated people, he became a Marxist, a communist. What a terrible, beginning with socialism, of course, and then Marxist, communism, that's how it goes. And it's wanna, known for him today, Marxism, ab communism. Absolutely. Well, I've got a question. Perhaps you can even answer this question in your own mind. Do you know people who once loved the Lord and said, I'm a Christian, and then they turned against the Lord, became anti-Christ, anti-God, and they choose to live their life that way? How about in the Bible? Were there people like that in the Bible? How about it, Jack, today and in the Bible? All of you know the story of Judas Iscariot. The Lord, in Matthew 10, verses 1 to 7, chose 12 apostles. Judas was one of them. And he told him to go and preach and heal. And Judas preached and healed everywhere. If I had time, I could show you where it's located in the Bible. And you know what? He was so trusted, they made him the treasurer. Now, this is where his socialism comes in, in John chapter 12, verses 5 to 7. A woman is anointing the feet of Jesus. And she dries what she's put on his feet with her hair. And Judas comes in and says, Why wasn't that ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and bear the treasurer's bag to put in his own pocket. That's where a lot of socialism ends as you study the lives of these men. They had everything. The people had nothing. Take it away from the rich. Give it to the poor. Judas showed his socialism there. And you know, there are a lot of people today and they make a decision, and they're gone. I think of a man in our time, a friend of Dr. Omens and mine, Chuck Templeton. He started out with Billy Graham, both of them as the Youth for Christ ministers together. They took turns. They shared the pulpit. They shared life in the motels. And Billy Graham is true to God even to this day. And when he dies, it'll be to die as gain, Philippians 1.21, because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, 2 Corinthians 5.8. Chuck Temple, and I saw him at the great Youth for Christ rally in Detroit. I was just a boy. He preached and a thousand came forward. You know where it ended up? He turned to atheism. He wanted nothing to do with Christ. He mocked Christianity. And in a book he wrote just before he died, he said, Farewell, God. What a sad thing. Now, how is it that these men can speak the language and know all these things? Because many of them, when they walk an aisle, have a religious exercise, but not an experience with God. They become unconverted converts. And you know, it's pictured so beautifully in the Word of God. Let Jesus speak. Mark 7, verse 6. Well, hath Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Luke 15, 15. You are they which justify yourselves before men by what you say, but God knows your heart. Titus 1, 16. They profess that they know God, but in works, daily living, they deny him being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Hypocrites. And you know, I meet thousands of them. I've seen two and a half million people come to Christ, but I also have seen people in America who were brought up in Christianity and they talked about Christ and today they mock him and laugh at him and want nothing to do with him. Now, is it because they lost their salvation? No, it's because they never had it. First John 2, 19. He's talking about ministers. They went out from us, but they weren't of us. If they had been of us, Chuck Templeton included, they would have remained with us but they turned their back on it that it might be made manifest, proven that they were not all of us. And hell is going to be hot for these hypocrites. For Jesus said to Judas, it were better that you had never been born to, to die in this condition. And remember, when he died, he went to his own place, hell, Acts 125. And I think that's where Chuck Templeton it is tonight. Even that great preacher that blessed my heart that night. In hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torment. Luke 16, 23. You cannot mock Christ and get away with it. He that believeth on Christ is not condemned. He that believeth not is condemned already. That's John 3, 18. John 3, 36. He that believeth on Christ 
hath everlasting life. He that believeth not shall not see life, but the wrath, the wrath, the wrath of God abides on him. And that's eternal hell. And I'm still a hellfire preacher because it's in this book 200 times. No one will silence what I preach when it's in this book. Oh, Jack, that's powerful. You know, I've had people come to me and uh, say, you know, Rick, I'm, I'm not sure I'm a, a Christian. And I never say to them, well, you're a good church member or you do good works or you give to this organization. You're a good person. Don't ever say that. We're not good enough to get to heaven. I say to them, make sure. Be sure you have the Lord in your heart. That's the main thing you're talking oh, about here, yes, Jack. Honey. To be and beware sure. of atheism and socialism because it leads men to where Marx went and Chuck Templeton went and where you're going to go if you're not trusting totally in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus like Marx mentioned earlier in life. We're going to show you in a minute how you can be sure that you're ready for heaven. I could not believe my eyes as to how Christianity is being attacked around the world. And in Oklahoma City, there's an artist who has, oh, what a terrible uh, picture of the Virgin Mary. Take a look at the headline, Weapon-Toting Virgin Mary. Art is gaining attention. Now this Oklahoma City woman's art of a gun-toting Virgin Mary. Mary. And then on the bottom, she has the Virgin Mary's beautiful heart, but in her right hand, a terrible hand grenade. Oh, my. Blasphemy. Oh, yes, it is. Going on. Italy fights for crucifixes in the classrooms. You know, I'll tell you, Christianity is being attacked around the world, and here's something else. A change for C3 Exchange. Church takes a new name and takes down the cross. Drop the name Christ Community Church and took the cross down. Now that is right here in Michigan. Friends, can you see how Christianity is being attacked around the world? Oh, Christ, the Virgin Mary, just everything and everything about Christianity. The European Union has become socialistic and they're trying to get Christ out of the uh, churches and out of the schools and no more crucifixes. And they're already going to bat with Italy and Spain and Poland and God help us, it's a sad situation. Because of socialism, the churches are almost empty over there, whether it's Catholic, uh, Lutheran, or Christian Reform, or the Church of England, they're running around 2%. 98% don't even want to bother anymore. The mosques are filled, the churches are empty. Socialism has taken over, and that's where America's headed. Now I want to say something right away. I'm ashamed of this Reverend Lawton, who just had the cross removed. That was the Christ Community Church, changed for some ridiculous name. And he said, I don't want the cross there because I don't want to offend atheists and Muslims. Well, God forgive you. And I'm going to tell you who you are, Reverend Lawton. You are an enemy of the cross of Christ, Philippians 3.18. Jesus said this would come, and Paul did too. And I'll tell you why you did it, because you don't know God. You're like Chuck Templeton. You're like Judas. Oh, I know you don't like to hear it, but listen to me carefully. The Bible says the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, that are lost. Foolishness. Paul said we will be persecuted for the message of the cross, Galatians 6.12. But he said, God forbid that I should glory in anything except the cross of Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians 1.20 says, Christ made peace through the blood of his cross. Hebrews 12.2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, suffering the shame, because he was waiting for that hour when he'd see those he redeemed through the cross in heaven. You don't get there through the cross. You don't get there. You better stick your cross back up or all your services are a bunch of wasted time. Now, why is this happening? I'm quoting the Bible, 1 Timothy 4.1. The Holy Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the Christian faith, and that includes the cross, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. That's the Bible. Peter says in 2 Peter 2.1, 
there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers, false preachers among you, who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord Jesus Christ, who bought them, and the cross on which he died. Oh, Rex Seller, we are to earnestly contend for the faith, for there are certain men crept in unawares, ungodly men, and they turn the grace of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ into lasciviousness, and many will follow them. You can build a church in anything today. Just take out all the hymns on the cross and the blood. God, forgive us. This is not Christianity. Jack, that was beautiful from the Word of God about the cross, and that's where my faith is based. How about yours? We're going to deal with that in just a moment. But a famous black journalist gave a most enlightening view as to where our country is headed, and that is Thomas Sowell. He says, is U.S. now on slippery slope to tyranny? When Adolf Hitler was building up the Nazi movement in the 1920s leading up to his taking power in the 1930s, he deliberately sought to activate people who did not normally pay much attention to politics. Such people were a valuable addition to his political base since they were particularly susceptible to Hitler's rhetoric and had far less basis for questioning his assumptions or his conclusions. Useful idiots! was the term supposedly coined by V.I. Lenin to describe similarly unthinking supporters of his dictatorship in the Soviet Union. Put differently, a democracy needs informed citizens if it is to thrive or ultimately even survive. And going on with Thomas Sowell, in our times, American democracy is being dismantled piece by piece before our very eyes by the current administration in Washington. And few people seem to be concerned about it. Oh, what God, a powerful article. And you know, Jack, here's another powerful article. Would you like to read it? Yes, this is from Wayne Allen Root. Barack Obama is no fool. He is not incompetent. To the contrary, he is brilliant. He knows exactly what he's doing. He is purposely overwhelming the United States economy to create systemic failure, economic crisis, and social chaos, thereby destroying capitalism and our country from within. Barack Obama was my college classmate, Columbia University, class of 83. Obama is following the plan of Cloward and Piven, two professors at Columbia University. They outlined a plan to socialize America by overwhelming the system with government spending and entitlement demands. It is a brilliant Machiavellian game plan to turn the United States, get this, into a socialist Marxist state with a permanent majority that desperately needs government for survival and can be counted on to always vote for bigger government. Why not? They have no responsibility to pay for it. Add it up and you've got the perfect Marxist scheme, all devised by my Columbia University college classmate, Barack Obama, using the Cloward and Piven plan. Will all this happen? That is a total socialistic order. The revived Roman Empire, the European Union, we're there, ladies and gentlemen, pray for America. Oh, yes, we need to pray for America. We need to pray for something else. What have you done with the cross? Is the Lord in your heart? Jack, could you please give us an invitation right now? Some of you have a head knowledge like Marx did. Get the real thing. Look at me. Pray this sincerely. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. You died for me. I trust in the cross. I love the cross because of what you did for me to save me on that cross. Today I receive it. Come into my heart, Jesus. Be my Savior. In your holy name I pray this. Amen. Amen. Oh, how we need the Savior in the day and age in which we're living. Did you open your heart to Him? Write to me. There's my address. I'll send this to you absolutely free. First steps in a new direction. Yours absolutely free. Well, you know we have a wonderful offer for you. Bob, would you please tell them how they can receive it? To order your copy of the book God's Good Plan with the bonus DVD, Terrorism Accelerating, But Peace Coming, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. 
To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A6Y1. Thank you so much, Bob. Please order God's Good Plan because we are also going to be enclosing in an extended DVD that you will want because we are giving more information. Oh my, oh my, our time goes so very, very quickly with you, but I do want to leave you with a wonderful, wonderful saying. The living God can take the fear out of living. Trust in Him. Know Him as your Savior. The living God can take the fear out of living. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, the living God cares for you. And so do we so very much. Bye-bye.